we present a method to learn and propagate shape placements from a few examples provided by a user. Shapes are placed in two-dimensional scenes or on planar surfaces of three-dimensional scenes, such as the ground plane in this example. We can then find placements that are similar to the given examples. Our similarity metric is based on relations of the place shapes to the surrounding geometry. Our method operates on the bounding boxes of place shapes shown in red. The bounding boxes of the example placements are sampled with a fixed set of points. Here, we use two points for illustration, namely the lower left and upper right corners of the bounding box. The relation of a point to the surrounding geometry is expressed with simple geometric relationships, such as the distance to a boundary or the position in the local coordinate frame of a nearby object. These relationships form the feature set of a point. To find points with similar features, we train a probabilistic model on the examples. The modes of this model correspond to points with similar geometric relationships. One model is trained for each sample point. Pairs of propagated lower left and upper right corner points are used to construct candidate placement. These are ranked using a combined model that incorporates the features of all sample points. Candidates with the highest score are used as the final output placements. Here, we show a few operations performed during a typical facade modeling session. Modeling operations are restricted to the skyscrapers marked in blue. Example placements are shown in red, and propagated placements in green. Propagated shapes can be extruded to create more interesting objects. Boolean union and subtraction are also supported by our framework. We show more examples of these operations later in this video. Next, we show how to record the modeling session to create any number of varied new facades without further user interaction. Each operation performed during a modeling session can be recorded in an operations tree. On the right, we show a short modeling session. Child operations are limited in scope to the output of their parents. Note that this propagation only created a single new roof. We still perform the propagation instead of placing the roof manually to record the roof placement in the operations tree. As we will see in a moment, this operation can then be applied to other scenes to create any number of new roofs. A modeling session recorded in this way can be applied to any number of new scenes without further user interaction to create any number of new varied models. Next, we show how our method can be used to create a variety of mass models by applying simple extrusion and Boolean operations to the propagated shapes. In this modeling session, the goal is to create the mass models for nine skyscrapers. The starting point is a set of labeled skyscraper footprints. 
The upper right corner shows which operation is performed in each step. These nine skyscraper mass models were created with only 71 operations, including selections. The recorded modeling session could be used to generate thousands of different skyscrapers. The beige skyscrapers were created in a modeling session consisting of 146 operations. The recorded operations tree was used to create the other skyscrapers shown here without user interaction. Note how the facade elements adapt to the shape of the mass model. These kitchens were created with 85 modeling operations, starting with the rough shape of the room. Finally, a large city scene was generated with 135 operations. The street plan, shown on the ground plane, was used as a starting point. Four separate city tiles were created, containing a total of 1,181 buildings, no two of which are exactly alike. 